So to another forward in West London, Rodney Marsh of Queen's Park Rangers, who sold plenty of tickets in Shepherd's Bush. Here was a footballing prankster who began his career at Fulham, but it flourished when he pulled on that hooped number 10 shirt. At Wembley in 1967, when Queen's Park Rangers wore white, Marsh turned the League Cup final against West Bromwich Albion. to have a second chance. Oh, Marsh, three. Marsh just let go. Marsh made the game up as he went along, and it was inevitable he would be tempted to test his skills on a bigger stage. In 1972, a great deal of hullabaloo surrounded his £200,000 transfer to Manchester City. Now, signed by Malcolm Allison, Rodney was asked to bring his rare gifts to a team already laden with stars. As a world-class player, what do you think you've got to offer that other than other footballer can offer? What do you think is your unique quality? Well, I like to think that I can score goals from, from positions that other people can't score goals from. I can perhaps once every four games, so I can score a goal in a situation which isn't on to score goals. And the other things, the, uh, the chasing back, the marking defenders and stopping overlapping fullbacks and this sort of thing. Because I think deeply about the game when I'm on the pitch, I think uh, constantly of the ball and doing things involving the ball, I think that perhaps sometimes I, I, f I forget about the other, other side of it, you know, the, uh, the, the off the ball running. I think sometimes it lapses from my mind because I'm concentrating on the ball. Eventually, Sir Alf Ramsey, pressed by a persistent media, picked Marsh for England. Story. McDonald's. Marsh! 
Beautiful goal! But Rodney only won nine caps, two as substitute, and in 1976 returned to his first club, Fulham, where he and George Best enjoyed an Indian summer. The sun always appealed to Rodney, and he spent the next part of his life coaching in America. He was a free spirit, one of those to whom the game came naturally. <laughs>